big part of the problem, at least in this particular case. But I want, I want to focus on the guns just one more time. Look at these mass shootings in just a little over the last two years. December 2015, San Bernardino, 14 dead. June 2016, Orlando, 49 dead. October 2017, Las Vegas, 58 dead. November 2017, Sutherland Springs, Texas, 26 dead. And now Parkland, 17 dead. I understand it's the person who fires the weapon. As you say, it's evil. But don't these assault weapons allow an evil person to kill more people more quickly? Sure. You know, when you think about any of these things, I went through Pulse. You know, we had the airport shooting a little over a year ago, and now we have this. I mean, you just your heart goes out to everybody that's been impacted. So you've got to weigh. You've got to weigh our constitutional rights, which I believe in, against public safety. So, and that's what I'm trying to do with this. And that's why it's not just one thing. It's everything I listened. I listened to law enforcement. I brought them up. I listened to educators. I listened to mental health people. I listened to students. I've talked to parents. And I believe what we're doing, well, I, I believe it will stop this from happening. That's my goal. I want to I wanna do everything I can in my job right now to make sure this doesn't happen again. President Trump wants to train and pay teachers to patrol the schools, and if there's a shooter, to take them on. Here he is. And a teacher would have shot the hell out of him before he knew what happened. He's talking about that a lot. You oppose arming teachers. I disagree with him. I, I believe I believe you got to focus on people that are well trained, law enforcement that are trained to do this. I want to make sure we have significant law enforcement presence on top of hardening the schools, metal detectors, bulletproof glass, um, better perimeter fencing, all these things. And and the other thing is I want to give the, our sheriff's department in each county the authority to do create the program on a per school basis, and that that parents can feel comfortable that their child's going to a safe school. But why not if there's a teacher and you know not every teacher, only teachers that are trained, only teachers that volunteer, but if there's a teacher in a classroom and the shooter doesn't know where that teacher is, why not? I want our teachers to teach, and I want, uh, I want our law enforcement officers to be able to protect the students. I want, I want each group to focus on what they're good at. As you mentioned, there were a number of security lapses in this particular case. Last month, someone called the FBI tip line and said this, I know he, the shooter, is going to explode. In November, the woman whose home the shooter was staying in called the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Department, the 911 number, and gave this warning. Well, I cannot have him on the premises now. He put the gun in the head of his brother before, so it's not the first time. And he did that to his mom. And reportedly, not one, but several of the Broward County Sheriff's deputies failed to get into the school while the attack was going on. What are you gonna do about that? First off, can you imagine being a parent that lost a loved one and know that all these failures, right? I mean, if, if we've gotta have accountability in this country with the FBI, what happened? Tell us. They still, what this is, you know, week and a half after, who was called? What was their process? How was it broken? Give us the facts, hold people accountable. The local sheriff's department, they've got to be completely transparent. We have to do a thorough investigation, and whoever didn't do their job has to be held accountable. I talk to law enforcement around the state. There's no one I've talked to that is not disgusted that, that the local sheriff's deputy that was there did not go in and kill that individual. Governor, if the Florida legislature passes your entire package, if Congress passes everything that President Trump is talking about, what can you say to the, the young people, the students who are watching you right now? Will they be safe? I'm going to do everything I can. Remember, I'm a father, I'm a grandfather. One of the first things I said when this happened, I called each of my daughters and I said, unfortunately, in your lifetime, you're going to have to teach your children how to deal with an active shooter. That's unfortunate we're going to have to do that. We're going to do everything we can, but each one of us is going to have to be prepared. Governor Scott, thank you. Thanks for coming in, and we'll obviously be following how your package goes in the Florida legislature. moment, you said, look, after 9-11, 
we fixed the situation. We made it a lot harder for people to get onto planes with guns. Uh, when you hear what Governor Scott just said, when you hear what President Trump is saying, would that fix the problem? It's not going to be fixed because I just heard what you said, what you're focusing on. Polarizing this event, the murder of these kids. You're talking about gun control. I just had to listen to you and Governor Scott talk about gun control. Gun control is a big issue. No one in America is going to come together on gun control, Chris. We're here. You didn't say one thing about fixing it. The American people, we could get together on school safety. But when you polarize it, this event and every other media, we don't care about gun control right now. That's a big issue in the country, and you're not going to get everyone together on it. But we're going to get everyone together on fixing our schools. And, and I just listened to you. So I just listened to you. You didn't talk. You didn't mention one question to Governor Scott about what are we going to do about the security for our children? How are we going to do that? But you're, you're just talking about gun control, which is going to just give you more ratings than every other media event. My daughter's dead. I want to know. Our kids are going to school in Kentucky on Monday. How are those kids safe? How about bringing that up to the media? How about bringing that up to Governor Scott? Not about guns. It's not about guns now. Today, it's not about guns. It's about the safety in our schools. And, and, you, and that's what you ask Governor Scott about, and I got to listen to that at my house. My, kid, my kid's not here because the schools weren't safe. That's the main thing. You go into a courthouse, the judge is safe. The, the, steno the stenographer is not worried someone's coming in with a gun because they can't get in with a gun. The American people, we just want our schools safe. We don't want to talk about guns right now. Well, let me bring, let me bring in Delaney, and I very much respect what you have to say, sir. Uh, Delaney, your thoughts about what you're hearing from uh, the, the governor and from the president, which is a lot, about a lot more than, than guns. Guns is part of it, but they also are talking about uh, hardening schools, about arming teachers. Your thoughts, what you're hearing. It is, it's, it's a very multidimensional issue, and he does, Andrew did say, he said, um, this is about school safety, and personally, I think that there is also an issue with the fact that he was able to access this, this weapon, this gun. Um, I personally, I do not believe that arming teachers is a, is a solution here. I know many people, Marco Rubio, Rick Scott, they've also said that they do not believe that arming teachers is a solution here, but there are many different issues that need to be addressed. What do you think? Delaney, what are the issues that you think need to be addressed? Um, I absolutely do agree that we we need to we need to address the the failures that have that have created a situation like this, a horrible situation like this. All of the things that have failed us, all the systems that have failed us. Um, I think that we do need to focus on improving our school safety a little bit, on improving um, our our officers. On I also believe that we need to make it harder for people to access guns when they are not mentally stable, when they are young, when they are not in a place where they should be owning a weapon like this. Andrew, I want, I want to go back, and I understand your strong feelings, but isn't this, issue of, of, isn't this issue of mental health and trying to make sure that sick people don't have access to guns, isn't that part of the problem? Okay, but was that, was that a big issue when, when we were protecting airports? Was that a big issue? I'm, I'm not saying it's not an issue, Chris, but w when we were protecting our federal buildings, is that a big issue? We have our children in, in these classes. We just, that's issues, okay? That could be worked out. But right now, the country just wants to come together and make our schools safe for our kids. There's no other issue than our kids going to class and not thinking about some monsters gonna stalk them in the hallway. It, it, that's what we need to focus on, and we could all come together as Americans instead of other issues. And those other issues, I agree with you, there are other issues there, but the main issue right now is, is fixing the schools. So, so let's talk specifically about that, sir. When you sure. say fix the schools, and I mean, you, you, you've compared it to airports. Are you saying school security, ID checks? You, you tell me what it is that you would like to see. I think that I'm not, I'm not an expert in it, but I think we need to hire the experts and check every school individually and make sure they're safe for their children, you know? There's, there's a serious problem. Like I said, it, it, the new norm has to be our kids are safe in the school. This can't happen again. I, I can't let it happen to another kid in another state. Like right now, Governor uh, Scott, 
Governor Scott's doing what he had to do, but he also had to go visit the parents of dead kids for two weeks. I'm, I'm on right now today because I, I want to tell every governor in every other state they need to be proactive right now. They need to get a bill in place, what, all, and we're going to put all America together and work with these governors to protect our schools. We, we can't have another shooting in this country. I, I can't live with it. And I'm, this, has, this has to stop with Parkland and my daughter's death I, I can't, be, can't be in vain. She, it has to be the last one. Andrew, what do you think about the teacher issue? And, you know, I know this must be incredibly painful, but now we hear these stories that there were police on the scene and they didn't go in. At least three sheriff's deputies were there and didn't go there's in. One, yeah. What there's is, one deputy that worked there, Peterson. He worked there and he's a coward. He was, uh, he stood by the door. I know as a fact he, he could have made it to the third floor and saved all six victims if he wasn't some little, I, I, I can't even, I, words can't even describe what the way I think about him. But I'm not trying to think about that stuff because that's just negative and I'm just gonna make me toxic. So I just wanna get the, the word out to the governors of every state that they have to do something now, today. Get together, they could call me. I have other dead parents here, we all wanna help them. And let's make the school safe. Delaney, when you hear that, and, and it's not just the, the, the sheriffs, or the deputies that, yeah. that didn't come well, in, but all of them. It's a bunch of, it's well, a lot of, it's a lot of failures, Chris, that needs to be, uh, it's a lot of incompetence all around. I could, I could write you a book on, on all the incompetence that happened at that school, but that's, that's not going to fix it or bring any of our dead kids back. I just don't want any more dead kids. And, and all that stuff's going to come out, and I don't want to focus on that. I'm on, he, I'm on with you, Chris, today to tell the American people that are messaging me what we need to do is fix it now in every other school. Make it the new norm now. You got to have metal detectors. It's got to be it's got to be like a courthouse, like a federal building, like an airport. That's how we need our schools now. Delaney, you go back to school this week. How are you feeling about that? It's it's very daunting to imagine going back to a place that just 2 weeks prior held such horrors and it's scary because I don't know if I'm going to be safe there but but I know that I have to I know that more now more than ever I am I'm proud of who I am and I feel like I need that sense of normalcy because in all of this it's like I can't even be a high schooler anymore and I just want to be a high school senior again and it's so hard to think about even doing that at this point Andrew, when we heard you at the president's listening session, and I speak as a parent and a grandparent, uh, my heart broke for you. I'm sure a lot of people did around the country. How are you doing, sir? Oh, it's, it's rough. I have my moments, you know. I, it's like a wave. It comes of a, a wave of emotions, but I have this fiery fire inside of me that's driving me that I never I can't explain it like I, I could walk through flames right now I, I could there's nothing I can't do and I just want to get the word out to everybody in this country that it could happen to you I'm real I'm a real guy man I grew up in Long Island I I, I didn't mean I, I never thought this could happen and it happened there's parents here that came here to support me today this young lady has to live with it it it, it stops you know it it's and it's an easy fix Chris you know, you just need some competent people to get together and, and, and put the right plan in place and make it so the kids are safe, man. They, that's all, you know, they got to be safe in school. Andrew, Delaney, thank you both for sharing your stories. Our hearts go out to both of you, but more important, we're going to stay on this story. I promise you, Andrew, I understand that it is not just a gun control issue, and we are going to do everything that we can to make your, our schools safer, and you are both welcome back anytime as part of that effort. Thank you both. Thanks, Thank Chris. You. Up next, we'll bring in our Sunday group to discuss the push to respond to another mass murder and whether this time will be any different. Cheered on by the national media, eager to blame the NRA, 
and call for even more government control. Many in legacy media love mass shootings. You guys love it. NRA officials Wayne LaPierre and Dana Lash going after Democrats and the media in the wake of the mass shooting in Florida. And it's time now for our Sunday group. GOP strategist Carl Rove, reporter for Axios, Jonathan Swan, former Democratic Congresswoman Donna Edwards and Kimberly Strassel of the Wall Street Journal. Kim, you didn't go nearly as far as the NRA folks did, but you wrote a pretty tough column in the Wall Street Journal on Friday. I want to put some of it up. You write, age limits and gun restrictions aren't an answer. They're a sideshow. Do you agree with what we just heard from Andrew Pollack that that's not the focus and it has to be on keeping schools safe, hardening them like airports? The, the, I think that we're having progress this time after this because we are finally talking about the things that actually really matter. And they are, one, protecting vulnerable communities. It is no accident that these shooters go to places that are gun-free zones because they know they'll be the only bad person with a weapon and no one there to stop them. And two, mental health, particularly those with severe mental illness and how we both have to get treatment for these people, help them overall, but make sure that they do not have easy access to guns. And these have been the failings that have been consistent in nearly every one of these events. Congresswoman Edwards, uh, Kim writes in her column that raising age limits, banning weapons are empty gestures. Do you agree with her? Well, I mean, I think clearly somebody who's 19 or 21 who has a, a diagnosed mental illness um, that presents a danger is not going to be stopped from buying a gun. But what we have to do is that the difference in, the, in mass shootings is that somebody who shows up who has a weapon that's turned into an automatic weapon changes that place, kills more people. And so I think we do have to reinstate the assault weapons ban. I think that we do have to make sure that people who are prohibited really are prohibited and can't slip through and get uh, a, a weapon anyway. And so these are things that are common sense measures that most Americans support. And the NRA, as proven this last week, is completely out of step, out of step with the vast majority of the Can American I just, people. I, I want to, there have no no one has used an automatic weapon They've in any converted, event. They have converted semi-automatic weapons to make them effectively automatic. The AR-15 with, AR with, a, with a bump stock, uh, with a magazine clip that, you know, fires, you know, rapid speed and, and, and more um, ammunition, turns that but, but into a much more slightly, dangerous You know, and, and I got a stern talking to from Andrew Pollack, and, and part of what he's saying is, which, which actually I think is, a, is, a, is an argument, you can argue whether he's right or wrong, is you're going to have that argument. You and Kim are going to disagree. People in Congress are going to disagree. And they're, let's be honest, we're not going to ban assault weapons anytime soon. And he's saying, let's do what we can agree on, which is harden schools. Put, make them like airports, metal detectors, security guards, all of that. Well, we, we could turn our schools into prisons, and it's still not going to keep people who are able to go and get a weapon that they couldn't or, ordinarily get across a counter um, and in some other way from turning those weapons into weapons of war in our schools, in our shopping malls, in our churches. I mean, we've seen this over and over again. And if the NRA wants to use its money to stand in the way of sensible gun legislation, they can do that. But I think these children have demonstrated, these young people have demonstrated this last week that that is no longer acceptable. Kim, and I want to bring the gentleman in. But no, we, we need to be talking about mental illness. These people are, are getting rid of, by the way, too, what Chris just said matters so much. You know, and I know, we both know, no one's reinstating an assault weapons ban anytime soon. So we can spend the next two years fighting about that, or we can actually do something proactive in the schools and in other vulnerable communities, churches. Again, no accident that these are the places that the targeters go out and, and go after. Carl, we've seen all this way too many times, and we almost know the script before it happens. There's a massacre, there is all this demand for change, there's a debate, and nothing happens. President Trump said this week, this time is going to be different. Take a look. We're talking about common sense, and it's a great thing. And the NRA will, will back it. I really feel very confident. The NRA will back it, and so will Congress, and so will the Senate. Is he right? Is the president right? Is this time different? It feels like it. 
uh, because principally the focus while we've had the, 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 the traditional debate we've always had about weapons and guns, this debate, as Mr. Pollack so uh, powerfully put it, is focused on keeping our schools safe. And look, think about this. We had so many failures of our local law enforcement. 39 times this kid was, uh, the police were called about this kid. We had 911 warnings about his mental state. We had his social media postings. Uh, the, the system failed. We had a armed guard at the, stationed at the school who stood outside for four minutes while shots rang out inside. We had him joined by at least three other deputies who again stood outside while shots rang out and people were killed. And we had failures with the FBI. The FBI received on its on its on, on its. So what's the answer? Well, the war, the answer is take a look at every one of those failures of those systems and fix them. Find out what other failures there are. This bill by Senators Cornyn and Murphy, a bipartisan answer to fix the problems in the federal registry. We had an action taken by the Secretary of the Air Force, which was far-reaching. She was the, she was the one charged with after the shooting in Sutherland Springs, uh, Texas, with with fixing the problem of the federal government having 7,000 Air Force personnel, I believe the number was, who should not have had weapons, who were not in the database that would have kept them from getting weapons. So, But I think Mr. Pollack has hit it. This is about looking at our schools. I had breakfast yesterday morning with my goddaughter, who's in a high school in Frisco, Texas, and she talked about how it is routine for their teachers to lock the doors in the classroom. Now, I can't remember that when I went no. to high school. I cannot. Yeah. But that's the world in which we live, and we've got to look at these places and say, what can we do to limit the number of access points, to increase the security, and to make it more or less likely that if somebody attempts this kind of an act, they can be stopped and thwarted. Jonathan, what are you hearing uh, at the White House? Is the president, how hard is he prepared to push the package that we're hearing about, some of which involves guns, some of which doesn't involve guns? And is it realistic to think that he's going to be able to bring, as he claims, Republican leaders who have killed gun legislation and a lot of these issues before and the NRA along because there's some issues here like the red flag law, like raising the age, they're going to be very tough for the NRA to swallow. Well, the few issues that he's hung up on, uh, the raising the age limit, he's very passionate about that privately, immediately since the, uh, this uh, terrible tragedy. He was saying kids can't be allowed to have guns. He just kept saying that. Um, and people were trying to work out what he meant. And then finally he put a number around it. He said, if you're under 21, you shouldn't have a gun. Well, I don't see that flying through Congress. I mean, the right are not happy about that. And, you know, I've been getting text message this morning, even just pointing to his interview last night with um, Janine Pirro, uh, Judge Janine, he kept pushing that point. I don't see that getting anywhere in Congress. Um, the Cornyn bill, people uh, talk about it like it's a fait accompli, you know, fixing this national instant background check. That's even going to be like, you know, not the easiest thing in the world. I think they can get it through, but the problem is people will want to turn this into a Christmas tree. They want to attach every little thing that they've been wanting in terms of gun control, and that's the way you kill these bills. So I think if they keep it kind of narrow and focused, they can get something done there. Um, but the school safety issue seems to be the one that culturally uh, Trump is most passionate about, and I think he's probably in the best position to change the conversation. But, but even on that it. issue, Jonathan. It's a state issue, right? I was gonna, well, one is a state issue, also the idea of the teachers. Right. Right. Very Even Governor idea. Scott's against 100%. that. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, too, I think you have to put it in the right framework. Uh, if you're talking about forcing or requiring teachers to do something like that's not going to fly. But look, we know that probably the most law abiding part of the public are people who have concealed carry permits. Uh, they've had to go through a lot of background checks. They've had to go through training. There's surely some teachers out there, uh, quite a few probably, who have concealed carry permits. If they want to be more protected in the classroom? Should we tell them no? I think that's a debate that needs to happen out there. Other ways just for teachers to protect, maybe give them a flashbang or something so that when someone runs in, they have some opportunity to help protect their kids. But those are the debates we need to be having. We don't have enough money to put um, firearms in schools. What we need to do is to make sure that our children are safe by making sure that people who have mental illnesses who are otherwise prohibited should not be able to get a weapon and take these weapons of war off the street. All right, we have, to, we have to break away here. I just, I just want to say, though, as I listen to you, frankly, I'm discouraged because the same divisions that have stopped progress in the past, I'm worried that maybe it's going to stop it again. Be more optimistic. Yeah. Be more optimistic? Young people. Well, I have to say, they, they have it. been the, the one silver lining in this whole thing, the students. Thank you, panel. See you next Sunday.
When we come back, the Democrats' counter memo on alleged government surveillance abuses is now public. We'll speak with a key member of the House Intelligence Surveil, a former Trump campaign official. Joining us now from Connecticut, Congressman Jim Himes, the number two Democrat on the House Intelligence Committee. Uh, Congressman, the Republican memo says that the FBI and the Justice Department based their application to the FISA court to surveil that Trump campaign advisor Carter Page based it on the so-called Steele dossier. In the memo, the Democratic memo, you say that's not true. Explain. Yeah, so Chris, and, and thanks for having me on. Um, uh, you know, as the Democratic memo now makes plain, um, the application to the FISA court for a uh, warrant to monitor Carter Page uh, was not based on the Steele information. And, and if we have time, we'll cover the question of whether the Steele information has been, the Steele dossier has been in any way discredited, because it largely hasn't. But nonetheless, um, the point is that, the, as our memo makes clear, Carter Page was of interest for his connections to the Russians for years uh, before 2016, uh, October of 2016, he'd had all sorts of contact. He'd been uh, with the Russians. He'd been interviewed by the FBI. And so there's a long history of which the dossier is just a small part of that application but, to the Republican judges for a me, warrant. But let me pick up on that, because in the GOP memo that was put out by the majority, Devin Nunes and the majority, they make this statement. I'm going to put up the quote from the memo. Deputy FBI Director McCabe testified before the committee on, in December 2017 that no surveillance warrant would have been sought from the FISC, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, without the Steele dossier information. Congressman, nowhere in your 10-page memo do you and the other Democrats rebut that. Um, that is true, but I was in the room. Uh, Devin Nunes was not in the room when Andrew McCabe was interviewed, and I will tell you that he did not say that. He did not say that a FISA warrant would not have been requested but for the Steele uh, information. Well, then why didn't now, you he, put that in your memo? Uh, well, because the uh, transcript of our conversation with Andrew McCabe was classified, and the Democratic memo, this is important, Chris, the Democratic memo, unlike the Republican memo, contained no additional classified information that was made uh, that was made public. So again, I was in the room. Andrew McCabe did not say that the FISA warrant would not have been sought. What he did say was that the warrant as uh, the application itself, which of course went through all sorts of scrutiny at DOJ and then was scrutinized by a Republican federal judge, that all of its pieces were important. But he absolutely did not say that it would not have been filed had it not been for the, do the dossier information. All right, I want to get to this question of classified information in a moment, but I just want to follow up on, on the, the Steele dossier. One of the Republicans' main complaints is that the government never informed the court when it sought the, the warrant to uh, monitor Carter Page, never informed them that the dossier had been paid for by the Clinton campaign and the Democratic National Committee. You, in writing the memo, I say you collectively, quote this from the application for the warrant. The FBI speculates that the identified U.S. person and